On September 29th, 2022, social commentator and mathematician Eric Weinstein revealed that he got a UFO briefing from Luis Elizondo. Here is a picture and the tweet read, thought I'd get some help trying to figure out what the heck is actually going on. Thanks, Lou. And on October 12th, we got some insights from him on his Twitter account about what he learned from the briefing. Let's dig into those tweets. Here's the tweet by Drew, which led Eric to start talking about UAP. Now, Eric says he can't really reveal anything specific about his conversation with Elizondo, but in reality, as we go through his comments, at least in a, in a non-specific way, we do get some insight into what he was told. Now, Eric, now, Drew starts off with, Dear Eric Weinstein, can you please share what you learned from hanging out with Luis Elizondo? Sincerely, humanity. Eric says, I decline. My private conversations are treated by me as private, and there are potentially serious security implications. I may be a fierce critic of government malfeasance, corruption, and gaslighting, but I'm also Team United States. If that's confusing, I can't help much. Lightly Salted writes, Do you find the topic worth pursuing? Eric responds, It's infuriating, but I don't feel I have a choice. I would love to stop. Smoke and mirrors are everywhere, and the answer is hidden in a national security funhouse that is no fun at all. But we have zero choice here given what is claimed and what is at stake. Thanks. Regarding what's at stake, Here's a tweet from Eric Weinstein from June 9th of 2022 that I think gets at the heart of what he perceives is at stake um, considering how the UFO topic has been treated from our government, our military, and, and even our media over the past 1,700 days or so. He writes, it is now time to inform us all. It is either an elaborate U.S. government PSYOP hoax or something of incomparable significance. It's not swamp gas anymore. It's not Mylar balloons and a few people desperate to get on television. But it is definitely time to end the soft language. It's big. Now, this tweet by Weinstein is rather significant. It implicates that he knows of a time frame regarding when we'll get more information. Uh, presumably, he got that during his discussion with Elizondo, but I, as I recall, Weinstein has spoken to other insiders in the past that were trying to get in contact with him regarding what is allegedly coming down the pipe that will change the world. Edmund writes, Based on what you know, can you speculate a time frame for further disclosure, either from individuals or government? Eric responds, not yet publicly. In that same light, Ariel Elizabeth writes, do you believe something world-changing will happen within your lifetime? Eric responds, you aren't going to have to wait that long. Yakman writes regarding his meeting with Elizondo, did you find it useful? Eric responds, quite. Agent Nan writes, do you feel more or less optimistic that the public will anytime soon have a clearer idea what is going on, e.g. a genuine something versus PSYOP? To which Eric responds, I want this to happen, but it has to be done by the book. I'm trying. I don't know if Eric's been told about upcoming hearings, but I think that he has. And this tweet gives me the impression, although I can't know with any degree of certainty, that he leans toward this not being a PSYOP, but instead being a, a revelation about non-human technology that has been um, insulated from, from the public that's going to come out. Now, regarding the proposition for further hearings, after we go over a few more of his tweets, we'll go deeper into that because a a Christopher Sharp of Liberation Times actually published an amazing article on that very subject. Varen writes, Do you consider that you might be part of the gas lighting? To which Eric responds, One billion trillion percent. You should worry about this too. I'm positive I'm being used completely. Peter Venkman writes, Eric, we are just tired of the infinite circle jerk. There are people with answers and those answers need to be made public. Eric responds, with you on this. That's the crux of the matter. The New York Times article that started this whole thing came out 1800 days ago. And let me just impart a little common sense to my skeptical friends. At least it's common sense to me. You may disagree. 
If it was really the case that the Pentagon only had low information zone value data on UAP, I don't think they would have allowed this to uh, persist as long as they have. I, I don't think they would have not had a method to have squashed this, considering the stakes, considering how it promotes the idea that we've been lied to for decades on UFOs and pilots are potentially seeing non-human technology. Like, why would you, why would you even uh, be okay with allowing that to percolate within the zeitgeist? Now, some people would say, well, it's, just, it's a psyop. We're trying, to, we're trying to fool the Russians to thinking we have much better technology than we do. Okay, maybe, but that's pretty cockamamie too. Now, I think that's the problem. The problem is they have the high fidelity data that makes it clear this technology is, is not coming from an adversary and it's not coming from the United States military inventory. And that's why this has persisted for 1,800 days. And it's why it will continue to persist. And it's why the United States Congress will continue to uh, pressure the Pentagon. But we'll go further into that when we cover Christopher Sharp's article that came out today. One Fine Day wrote, Lou Elizondo recently gave a small list of topics he would recommend for study to begin to wrangle the phenomenon. If he were king, what areas of intersectional learning do you think are needed and should be more deeply looked into? Your, your ufology curriculum. Thanks, Eric. Eric gives his list. General relativity, pseudo-Romanian geometry, quantum field theory, Material science, condensed matter, nuclear physics, weaponry, disinformation theory, cult indoctrination, deprogramming, propaganda, preference falsification theory, Mansfield Amendment, science policy theory, V. Bush, selection, abstracted, comparative eschatology, anti-gravity pseudoscience involving top physicists and mathematicians in the era of the so-called golden age of general relativity, GU, mind control, remember, you asked. Let's dig into Christopher Sharp's article titled Exclusive. More UFO hearings are coming as whistleblowers are called forward and legacy programs are verified by Congress. Here's an excerpt and a link to the full article is in the description below. Liberation Times has learned that new public congressional unidentified aerospace undersea phenomena UAP hearings can be expected once National Defense Authorization Act 2023 NDAA UAP language is signed into law. As reported by Dean Johnson, Intelligence Authorization Act IAA 2023 language is now wrapped up within the NDAA and includes important whistleblower protections. Sources have told Liberation Times that the NDAA could be passed in weeks after upcoming midterm elections in November. Although it is cautioned that there are no certainties with regard to the exact timeline due to political divisions, changes in political composition following midterms, and the Ukrainian situation. However, sources have stated that public hearings can be expected after the NDAA is signed into law and that whistleblowers have already been contacted to speak before Congress. Liberation Times understands that the best case scenario could see such hearings occur before Christmas. There has been some doubt whether any whistleblowers testifying could back up their claims. However, Liberation Times understands from multiple political and defense sources that a substantial amount of information involving secretive UAP retrieval and back engineering programs have been verified by Congress. Speaking to Liberation Times, journalist and filmmaker Jeremy Corbell commented, Regarding the mystery of UFOs, the silver bullet is coming. The moment it is understood by the public that not only have we obtained spacecraft fabricated by non-human intelligence, but that we have also been attempting to reverse engineer that technology for decades, Pandora's box is finally open. The new legislation to provide amnesty and immunity for those involved in these programs to come forward is a potential game changer. I have personally spoken with numerous individuals who have had roles in these legacy UFO exploitation programs. This short abstract at the top of his article is really important. There is now some urgency from Congress to provide transparency and some insiders hope that any released information can potentially bring people together at a time when the likelihood of nuclear conflict has risen. It has been cited many, many times, and I've cited it before years ago, that President Reagan, before the United Nations, 
stated the following, Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Now, to me, that's basically Reagan acknowledging how UFO disclosure would benefit humanity without even knowing that's what he was doing. He put it within the frame of a threat. But I would argue that UAP intelligence, whatever it is, is inherently a threat, even if it's not a threat. Because if you don't know the will and intention of intelligences that have far exceeding technology to your own, that's at the very minimum a potential threat. And that demands the world work together to resolve the mystery of why these machines and intelligences are here, who is it that is behind the wheel, and what's their short, midterm, and long-term goal. These would be exquisitely paramount questions to answer that all 8 billion of us would want to partake in because it involves the very security of every nation on Earth. There are others in our skies and seas, and we don't know who they are, why they're here, and what they're doing. That would, on some fundamental level, unite all of humanity, because we would all have a vested interest to get to the bottom of that. And that remains true whether this presence is ultimately a threat or not. The point is we would have to figure it out. You, no one in their right mind, no institution, no academic, no scientist would just be like, oh, whatever. It's, it is what it is. Like we need to figure it out. No, everyone would, would demand to understand it. Obviously. And that alone could promote more peace in a world in which is so primitive and so very violent. On October 14th, I watched a wonderful interview with filmmaker James Fox on a, a YouTube channel called That Shelf. Link is in the description below. It's a 20-minute it's a interview. Really, really good stuff. The, the, uh, the host was great. And James goes into why he thinks disclosure would benefit humanity just as Reagan went into it in his own way, even if he, he didn't know that what he said could apply to disclosure. A lot of people intuitively ascertain the disclosure would be very beneficial for humanity. I really feel like we're on the precipice of, of, uh, of a massive revelation that could potentially uh, have a unifying effect on all of humanity. I, I believe that in my heart. I really do. I think that if we looked at this as an outside otherworldly intelligence, that would unify the planet in a way that's never been unified. I, I just believe that. And um, that excites me to think that I could have a little tiny role in that process. UFO disclosure, UFO disclosure is a moral, is a moral issue, issue on a multitude, on a multitude, of, multitude levels. of levels, not the least of which is that there is a decent chance that such a revelation could assist humankind in behaving with more civility, less war, more cooperation, and ultimate harmony. So why hold back? Why delay that which will help God's children? I think that says it all. And I'll leave it at that. Now, James Fox's movie, Moment of Contact, is coming out on October 18th. And 
it's, it covers what is known as the Roswell of Brazil. And it's been getting excellent reviews. I really look forward to it. And of course, I will make a video with my analysis. And I actually hope to get James Fox on this show so I can give an interview after the film comes out. Because that would be a lot of fun. But we'll see. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You could become a patron. You could become a YouTube member. You could give me a one-time donation. All of those potentialities are in the description box below. Or you could just slap a like on this bad boy and I will appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. If you watch this whole thing through, I want you to put in the comment box below comment section light special thanks to all patrons youtube members those that have bought merch those that have given me one-time donation i couldn't do without you thank you so much see you in the next episode